Hey everyone, so I'm going to go through the method of dominant balance. So we basically use this method when we're looking for an approximate solution when we can't solve the differential equation analytically. So I'm going to go through an example that I've taken from the first problem set that I've written down here. And we're basically looking um, to see what happens to y at large x. And to calculate this, um, we need to find out which two terms out of the three listed are dominant at large x. So there are three cases to consider. But let's firstly label each of the three terms. We'll call the first one A, the second one B, and the third one C. So as I said before, we're looking to see which two terms dominate at large x. So there are three possible options. Firstly, we have that A and B are dominant. So we delete C from the equation and we get A plus B is equal to zero. The next case to consider is when A and C are dominant. So we have A equals C. And the third case is when B and C are dominant. So we have B equals C. We now need to check the consistency in each of these cases. Um, and so let's start with the first equation. Case one, as I already said, we have A plus B is equal to zero. And we're basically assuming that the absolute value of A and B, their absolute values are greater or more dominant than the absolute value of C at large x. So if we write this out, we have that y prime minus x cubed over 1 plus x times y is equal to 0. Okay, so um, since we're considering what happens at large x, we're able to approximate the second term to x squared since the constant um, in the denominator would disappear at large x. So we end up with y prime is equal to x squared y. And then we can solve this like we usually do with separation of variables. So we have integral of 1 over y dy is equal to integral of x squared dx. So we do ln y is equal to 1 third x cubed plus a constant, which we can call k. And so we have y is equal to um, another constant, which we can still just call k, um, 1 third x cubed. OK. So now that we have a solution for y and y prime, we can then plug these values back into the original equation to find the values for a, b, and c. So we know that a is equal to x squared y, which we now know to be x squared e to the one-third x cubed. b is just equal to minus a, and so we have minus x squared e to the one-third x cubed. And c, we already know, um, which is x e to the minus x squared. So we now, now need to determine which of the terms dominate. Um, and we can see that each of the three terms has an exponential, which is going to dominate in each of the three terms. And in the a and b, we have e to the one-third x cubed. And so as x grows, or x gets bigger, um, those terms are going to grow very quickly. Um, but in the case of C, we have a negative exponent, um, and so that's going to go to zero. So we can see very easily that A and B are the dominating terms here. Um, so the absolute value of A and the absolute value of B um, are both greater than the absolute value of C at large x. So this means that we have a consistent case. Um, and although we found one consistent case, we still need to check the other two. So let's consider the second case, where we have a equal to c, um, 
where we're assuming that the values, absolute values of A and C are greater than the absolute value of B at large x. So if we write this out, we have that y prime is equal to x e to the minus x squared. So if we integrate, we get y is equal to the integral of x e to the minus x squared dx. So we can use a quick u substitution um, to solve this. So we have u is equal to minus e to the x squared du dx is equal to minus 2x, um, resulting in x dx being equal to minus a half du. So we can substitute this back into the equation. We get minus a half times the integral of e to the u du, giving minus a half e to the u plus another constant, um, we can call it k again, um, and substituting back in u, we get y is equal to minus a half e to the minus x squared plus this constant. Okay, so now we have the values for y and y prime. As we did in the first case, we can plug them back into the, the original equation to get values for a, b, and c. So a is just equal to c, which was x e to the minus x squared, b is equal to minus x squared y, which we know now to be minus a half x squared e to the minus x squared, and c again we know is x e to the minus x squared. So as we did in the last case, we need to determine which of the three terms uh, or which terms are dominating and all in all of these cases um, each of the three terms has an exponential with the same exponent and so we need to look at their coefficients and for b we have uh, minus a half x squared but for a and c we have x and we know that um, x squared is going to dominate over x so we actually have that b will be dominating a and c in this case, and so it's inconsistent. Um, and we still have one more case to check. Okay, so let's look at the third case um, where we have b equal to c because we're assuming that b and c are the dominating terms. So if we write this out, we have minus x cubed over 1 plus x multiplied by y is equal to x e to the minus x squared. So if we use the same approximation as we did before for um, these terms at large x, we get y is equal to minus 1 over x e to the minus x squared. And then we can then use the product rule to determine y prime and we get x to the minus 2 e to the minus x squared plus 2 e to the minus x squared. So as before where we had um, the solutions for y and y prime we can plug these back into the original equation to get the values for a, b and c. So we have a is equal to y prime, which we now know to be x to the minus 2 e to the minus x squared plus 2 e to the minus x squared, which can also be written in this way if we bring out the e to the minus x squared. b we just know is equal to c, which is x e to the minus x squared and again, we already have c, which is x e to the minus x squared. So in each of these three terms, we have e to the minus x squared. So again, we'll look at their coefficients. And we can see in a that we have 1 over x squared plus 2. And at large x, the constant 2 is going to be dominating. Um, 
but if we compare it to b and c, then at large x, x will be dominating the constant, um, resulting in b and c being the dominating terms, um, which again results in a consistent case. So we now have two consistent cases, and so we need to decide which one we use for our approximate um, solution for y. Okay, as I said before, we have two consistent cases. The first one was when a and b were dominating, and we got y equal to a constant times e to the one-third x cubed. And the values for absolute values for a and b were x squared e to the one-third x cubed. The other consistent case we got was when b and c were dominating. Our solution for y was equal to minus 1 over x e to the minus x squared. And the absolute values for b and c were equal to x e to the minus x squared. So now we need to determine which solution for y we need to use. And we do this by looking at the dominating terms in each case and deciding which one of those is more dominating. So in the first case, we have um, a and b equal to x squared e to the one third x cubed. And in the second consistent case, or the third case, we have b and c equal to x e to the minus x squared. And for reasons discussed before, we know that a and b is going to be much more dominating because of its positive exponent compared to b and c at large x. So we determine our approximate solution for what, to y. Um, we determine the solution for y as y equals x k e to the one third x cubed. Um, we can now also plug in the condition we got given. So y of two is equal to k e to the one third times eight, um, which is equal to three, just because of the condition we given before, which means k is equal to three e to the minus eight over three. This means that our final approximate solution for y is equal to three e to the minus eight over three times e to the one third x cubed. So the original question asks what happened to y at large x. And as we can see from this exponential term here, as x increases, y also increases. So as x tends to infinity or gets larger, y also tends to infinity. And that's it.